Hey y'all, Crystal here, and I'm back with the Tea with Crystal. Welcome. Man, do I have something to share with y'all today, some encouragement, because it truly encouraged me, and I just want to thank you for watching in advance. So the Tea with Crystal is the testimony where I testify and just tell, you know, the goodness of God and how he is working on me, in me, through me, what he's doing for me in this season. And so I, it's been a while, it's been a while. And honestly, like I got distracted. I got off track. I got off of focusing on what God was telling me to do and I'm back. So thank God for his grace, his goodness, his mercy, right? He is such a, a, a good God to us. <laughs> he truly is. And today I wanted to share about becoming, right? I remember a couple years ago about, this was about five or six years ago, I had this tagline that that I would say that was called living, learning, becoming. And it wasn't until a few days ago that I actually got the revelation of like what that really means. And you know, we'll hear something and then later on it's like full circle, like an aha moment of now I get it. But obviously, I had to go through a process. I had to go through some things to really understand what that meant. And this is important to know. This is the first key because you have to go through a process. There's no way that we cannot go through a process to get to the thing that we are trying to get to, right? And when God is doing something in us, he's not just going to say, here, I'm going to throw you in. In a sense, he's just going to be like, okay, but I got to get you prepared. I got to process you. I have to purge you. I got to get rid of some things. I have to do this. And it's required. And if you try to skip it, if you don't submit, if you don't surrender, if you don't be obedient in this season and just continue to seek the face of God, you're going to miss it. And you're going to keep wandering around like the children of Israel, right? And I just want to throw that out there. Now, the focus is becoming, that's the word, becoming, becoming. Who do you need to become to, for not to, but for God to accomplish the things or accomplish his will on the earth through you, using you as a vessel? Who are you required to become? That's the question. Now, a little backstory. So last week, today is August 20th. Last week, I received a word where somebody was speaking directly from God. <laughs> and it kind of scared me a little bit because when this person was speaking to me, they were reminding me of who I knew I was and who I've always wanted to be but never went after those things. And I knew it was a desire in my heart that I wanted to do these things from years ago. I'm 37 now, so I'm talking like my my teenage years, early 20s, like I wanted to do these things. I wanted to be a vlogger. I wanted to be a blogger. Like y'all know back then when Blogspot and all of that was like a thing thing. <laughs> I wanted to be a blogger. I wanted to be in beauty. I wanted to be in marketing, just communications and just sharing. I love to share. I love fashion. I loved beauty, like natural beauty. There was always something there for me in that industry. And I would go after those things and then I would kind of back away. Why? Because people. I was afraid of people in their faces. I was afraid of just being me and who God called me to be. And I was afraid to do what I desired to do because I, I just wanted to please other people. And now I know that that comes from some childhood things and things like that, that I'm currently going through a healing process from now. But back then, I couldn't understand like why I just couldn't keep going after the things that I knew I really truly desired to do that was in my heart. Like I really wanted to do. I wanted to be an influencer. So even now, as I'm looking at some of these women that I used to follow at the time that were inspiration for me, we're talking 
I mean, 10, 13, I would say 13 years ago because my oldest child is 13. So even before him, before he was born, I had these desires to do these things. And I just couldn't go after them because I was just trying to be somebody that I wasn't. I was trying to be somebody for other people. I was trying to become someone for a man and my relationship with God was not where it was is now. And so I definitely wasn't running after God's heart. And I definitely didn't understand that these are the desires that God put in my heart. And he's revealing to me who I am and what I'll be doing. So she was just reminding me, this person that was speaking to me, she was just reminding me of who I was. And it was like, what? Like, yes, I did desire to do those things. And it showed me how far away I had gotten from who I really am. And God has me in a season of like identity recovery. He has me in a season where he has given me like permission to do the things that I desire to do. And he's telling me, yes, you shall surely recover all. Like you shall recover all of the things. You are getting back to who I originally created you to be. And y'all, it's been a process. It's really been a process and so after I received this word from this person I was like God okay if you're telling me to do this obviously you know what my situation is now but you also know the outcome you know the outcome you're telling me to do this and I'm just gonna start taking the steps because that was something that she said as well she was like just start taking the steps don't worry about anything as you take the steps God will fix it he'll fix it and so I turned to the word. I went into prayer, but I also turned to the word and I was reading one morning and I got to, gosh, I wish I could remember how I even got up to reading this particular scripture because I was really doing some studying. So I was reading one thing and then it led me into reading something else. And I got to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse... It is verse 19. I'll start there. And I'm reading in the NLT version, reading from a good old iPad here. And so it says, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. And verse 22 says, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 through 27, and that is the NLT version. So I read that and I was like, there's my answer. Because what this person was saying to me was like, you think that you were called to do this in this industry, but you're actually going to become the people in this industry. And I'm like, hmm? <laughs> like, excuse me, <laughs> like what? And when I read that, I understood because when God calls us to do something and we're having a hard time being obedient, we're having a hard time showing up, we're having a hard time because we're trying to understand what God is doing before we actually do what he's telling us to do, we mess everything up. 
But the thing about this scripture that got me is when, who was reading this? Um, this is Paul. So Paul said, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become slave, a slave to all people to bring me into Christ. So when you skip down to verse 22, he said, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. He said, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. So he became the, a Jew so he can win the Jews. He became like the weak so he can win the weak. And I want to read this in another version. So in the AMPC version, it says, To the Jews I became as a Jew that I might win Jews. To men under the law I became as one under the law, though not myself being under the law that I might win those under the law. To the weak. Wanting in discernment, I have become weak, wanting in discernment, that I might win the weak and over scrupulous. I have become all things to all men, that I might be all means at all costs in any way and every way, save some by winning them to faith in Jesus Christ. Y'all y'all know A and P C is like a whole story, okay? It's like reading, really give you the details of what it really means. And when I read that, I was like, there's my answer. I have to become, because I remember when I was questioning, I was like, God, how can you call me to talk to these people? And I know nothing about them. And I was asking God this question. I was like, I feel like I really need to get to know them in order to be able to work with them. I would say these things, but I never thought about actually putting myself in their environment and going through their process myself, becoming like Paul said, to win them and it's not just in business because overall god told me you know you're gonna go and you're gonna preach this good news over here to these people you're gonna use what you're already doing which y'all i'm in the financial industry credit bookkeeping insurance i'm an insurance agent and he is like you're gonna take this and you are going to go present it before them and i'm like what i huh them? <laughs> I felt so far removed from it. I felt so far removed from them. Like, I know nothing about them. I know nothing about how they operate. I know nothing about their lifestyle. I like, how am I going to take this over here and, and present it before them? So I remember when I first started, I was trying to do it in such a broad way as if I was still talking to everybody. And then he started to reel it in a little bit and be a little more specific because I was trying to present things that I knew nothing about that wasn't my industry, like my, my area in the financial industry, like budgeting and things like that. That's not what I talk about. I talk about insurance. I talk about credit and I talk about bookkeeping and things like that. But I was trying to present the overall picture to them. He's like, no, Let's bring it back in. And so then when I started putting myself back out there, I got a little more specific and started talking about the things that I actually do and that I actually work in, that I'm actually certified in. But I still felt like I didn't understand them. I didn't understand them. And I didn't want to take the route of like getting on calls with them, asking them questions. And that's what I was trying to do. And I realized that it was leading me to be burnt out. Like I felt like I was just doing entirely too much work and it just didn't feel right. I felt like I was toiling. And I'm I'm questioning because I'm like, God, you called me to this, but why do I feel like my wheels are just churning? I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. I feel like I don't really still don't know how to talk to these people, but you're telling me to talk to them. And so once I received the word from this person a week ago, and then I was reading the scripture and that right there was my answer. To the Jews, I became a Jew. So God is like, there you go. You are going to become these people. You're going to become this person that I'm telling these particular people that I'm telling you to talk to. I'm very specific. Who I'm telling you to talk to. You are going to go through their process. You are going to go through their life. You are going to live it. And this is how you're going to talk to them. And this is how you're going to win them. Now, here's the thing. She also said to me, 
through the word of the Lord that don't be worried about the time. Don't be worried about your current situation. Don't look at how things are right now. I like God is saying, I, he already knows that she said <laughs> the specific time frame that it takes to go through their process. She said it, the exact number. And I'm like, okay, this is nobody but God because she spoke exactly how long it would take to go through this particular thing. And what I'm talking about is like the schooling to even start. She said, she said the exact number and she said, don't worry about it because I am the God of time. You may think that that's a lot of time and it's going to take too long, but for me, it doesn't mean anything. I just need you to do it. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go become them to be able to win them over to you. I get it. Thank you, Lord. And so what I started to do is take the steps necessary to start doing this. Because at first, I was starting to question and get into my own mindset and try to understand. I'm like, Lord, I'm a mom. I got six kids. Do I need to be letting this thing go that you told me to do to go do this? Like, just really going before God. Because I'm, like, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm not going to mess this up. I don't want to... I don't want to fail the test and I'm not going to go wander around these mountains no more. I just don't have time for that. I don't. I'm just going to do whatever you're telling me to do. And if it's not for right now and if it's not, if it's a distraction or whatever the case may be, God, you will cut it off immediately. But if it is from you, you will make everything line up for me to go do this. And so... I say all of that to say, like, who do you have to become? Because I wanted to get my backstories, give my backstory. So if you are here still 17 minutes later, thank you. I wanted to give a little bit of my backstory because it doesn't matter what God calls us to do. We have to become, at some point, the people that he has called us to talk to. We're going to have to become that person like there is somebody that is going to relate with us there are testimonies we are going to have to tell that is going to relate to the people that god has called us to or to fulfill the call that god is calling us to fulfill because god commissions us to do things and man i even read that weeks before like my study about how he commissioned different people to go do something like Jeremiah, I encourage you to read these things like Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel and like, ooh, Ezekiel's, is it Ezekiel or Elijah? I think it's Ezekiel. Y'all, either one, read them both. Um, like how he called them and what that process looked like and how he spoke to them. And he told them, don't be afraid because I'm going to give you everything you need. I believe for Ezekiel, he... He told Ezekiel, like, you're going to go speak to these people. And if you don't say what I need you to say or do what I need you to do, the blood is going to be on your hands. Because I just need you to go before them and present this good news that I have for them, this word that I have for them, this warning, this judgment, whatever it is that I have for them. And if you decide that you don't want to do it, their blood is going to be on your hands. And so he told Ezekiel... Y'all, I hope I'm right because I begin to mix up. He told him when he was preparing him, he's like, eat this scroll. Can you imagine eating paper? <laughs> like eating paper. He was like, eat this scroll and it's going to be sweet. It was sweet like honey to him. Like he's giving him the, the words, right? And so even for Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, don't be afraid because I'm going to give you the words to say. I'm going to touch your lips. Don't be afraid of their faces. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah was like, I'm young. I can't do this. I'm trying to make excuses. And God is like, no, if I'm calling you, you got this. And even the same for Isaiah, like their process to being called and commissioned, they were, God was like, I got you. Just trust me and do what I'm telling you to do. I need you to become this person. And then if I can mention some more people in the Bible, let's think about Esther. Esther had to go through a full process. She had to go through like two processes before she can even go before the king and save her people like to even be able to save her people she had to go through a process before she could even go before him and that took time 
that took time. Like she had to go through purification. Then she had to go through a beautification process before she can even go before the king as his queen. Let's think about Nehemiah. Like I, I read about Nehemiah all the time and Nehemiah, he was already working for the king, but he had to become now the person to go rebuild the gates, the walls for his people. So in this season, God is calling you right now, but you have to become the person that he needs you to be. So whoever he's calling you to, if you're showing up in a certain way, you have to stop thinking about how you're showing up and what's going on around you and what it looks like around you. And always have in your mind that I am becoming or I became this person. I'm dealing with this. I'm going through this process because of who God is calling me to speak to, because of the words that God wants to come out of my mouth, because of the souls that he wants me to win to Christ. Like he wants me to win these people to Christ. Like it says right here to the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might win Jews to men under the law. I became one under the law so that I might win those. Like it's about winning people to him. And I feel like I'm being very repetitive, but I want y'all to get this because if you are in a season where you don't understand, like I'm struggling, why am I going through this? Why are you calling me to these people? You're asking why, why, why? It's because he needs you to become. You think about Jesus, Jesus became, he became, <laughs> he became everything. He did. You think about uh, Joseph, Joseph became a slave. He was in the like pit to the promise. He went through a lot of things to be able to become the one that his brothers would ultimately have to come back to, to save them in a famine. But think about the process that he had to go through and who he had to become. He became pretty much the second in command. He received the keys to the kingdom. He was distributing the wealth. He was managing it all. But look at what he had to go through to become that person. So there's always going to be a process. You're going to have to become and becoming to become, you have to go through. You have to be in movement. And what that journey looks like or what that movement looks like is different for everybody. Because even though we're all called to win souls, we have to become that person to win souls. We have to become that person. So you may have had a season where you were in the club, you were clubbing, you were drinking, you were smoking. You remember all of the nights where you went home drunk. You remember the nights where you drove home from the club drunk or the parties and you just like, Lord, how did I even make it home? I don't even remember what happened last night, but by the grace of God, I'm home. I'm in my bed. I'm up and I'm alive today. And now you're fully saved and you're delivered. You don't live that life anymore. You became that person to help those who are now going through that, who are going through the exact same thing to say, I don't know how I got home last night. I was drunk. I was partying. And now I'm just tired of this life and I'm ready to be different. I don't want to do this no more. You were there. You were there and you were that person. There are so many people now that even I watch on YouTube and just following their stories. It's like this gives me another revelation when we begin to question God about the things that he's calling us to do. It's a requirement. I always see things now as prerequisites to what we are called to do. I, if, if I can reference college, like when you go to college, there are some courses that you have to take and they call them prerequisites before you can take the actual class that you need for the degree. And we think about math and I can stand that. I used to try to avoid that because I'm like, I'm not taking these classes. I don't want to have to take pre-math just to be able to take a regular 
algebra class. Now I have to go take pre-algebra. Like I don't want to have to do this prerequisite. And y'all, that delayed my college years a lot because of my pride. And I didn't want to go through that process. I didn't want to do what was required for me to be able to go through the process to get my degree. I'm like, I'm not taking no prerequisite. I'm not taking comp one. I'm not taking pre-algebra. Why do I have to take intensive reading just to... I'm wasting time. And that's where we mess up at. That is where we mess up. It's a it's a part of the process and it's required for us to become. So if I want to go get my degree in psychology because the goal is for me to become a psychologist or to get my master's become to become um, a marriage and family therapist, I can't skip those classes. If I'm required to do that and go through that and take those to be able to keep the process going, if I skip it, I'm prolonging the process. Meaning I don't tell, I'm telling myself like, I don't need to do that. I don't have to go through that. And that is how we look at the things that God is calling us to do. That's how we look at the things that we're going through in our lives. And that's pretty much the message that we're sending to God. No, I don't have to go through this. I don't want to go through this. And we don't even realize that we're failing and we're just positioning ourselves right back at the starting point of the wilderness. He's like, okay, it was only going to take three and a half years if you just trusted me. But now this is going to take you 10. <laughs> this is going to take you 10 years now just because you didn't want to go through that one step. You felt that it was too hard. You didn't want to become this person. You didn't want to go through this process when on the other side, it was going to give you the skills you needed. I was going to be able to use some of the things you learned in this class to apply to this over here. When you completed this class, this is what was going to happen for you. Like we just decide to just go all outside of God. And don't want to do the things because we want to understand. We feel like we don't have to. We like, who are we to tell God what we will and will not do? I wrote that down in my notebook. I'm like, Lord, I repent for telling you what I will and will not do. What I want to do and what I don't want to do. I repent for that because that's pride. Lord, please forgive me for doing that. And you really have to set everything aside to even come to that point and say, Lord, I repent. Redeem the time. All of the time that I've wasted because I didn't want to go through the process to become the person that you needed me to become. I'm thinking about it and I'm just like, God could have probably revealed this to me a long time ago. But because I didn't want to, uh, even now, all of a lot of things are just going through, flashing through my mind of moments that... God was like showing me like, I told you to do this and you didn't do it. I told you to do this over here and you didn't do it. You found every reason why you couldn't do it. You found every excuse. You got every distraction in the way and you didn't. Oh, my children need this. My children need that. My husband need this. Oh God, I can't do this. I'm overwhelmed. I don't want to take the time to learn. I don't want to discipline myself. I don't want to fast and pray. I don't want to, I don't want to discipline my body like the scripture said so even the, the scripture that i read before therefore wait right here so even talking about verse 24 do you not know that in a race all the runners compete but only one receives the prize so run your way race that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things they do it to win a wreath that will soon wither. But we, as followers of Christ, do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. <laughs> so even in that, God is telling us we have to train like an athlete. 
But our goal is not for us to become an athlete to win a wreath, to win prizes or anything that withers. It's to get a crown of eternal blessings. So even in that, we don't have to do things as if we are uncertain. So when God is requiring the process and requiring us to become somebody that he needs us to be, we don't have to be uncertain, but we become uncertain when we begin to question God and we try to understand on our own. It's like, God, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to become this person? And a lot of times it's because we don't want to go through the the hardship and discipline ourselves because we know that we're going to have to make a lot of trade-offs. We're going to have to set a lot of things aside that we want to enjoy watching Netflix, watching, uh, uh, eating this, eating that, or we may have to exercise for that season to get ourselves together. We stop drinking coffee for a while. Whew, it's me. Like we don't want to go through the hardships and discipline ourselves to buffet our bodies and subdue our bodies, our mind, our will, our emotions to proclaim to the people that God is calling to, calling us to, or to the people that we are required to become the gospel. So then what he says, if we don't discipline ourselves and if we don't sub, like don't handle ourselves roughly and subdue our ourselves then we will be unfit, unapproved, and rejected. So that even goes back to like imposter syndrome, like why people feel like we go through imposter syndrome and we feel like we're fake. It's because we know that there are steps in our process that we skipped. There are things that we didn't allow God to do for us so we could become the person that he's calling us to be. So when we are uncertain and we're just boxing the air, we feel like we're boxing the air, it's because we have got in the way of what God is calling us to do. And now we know we're a counterfeit. <laughs> we know that we are imposters. We know that we can't stand the test and that we'll be rejected by those that God is calling us to. And it's not to say that we'll never be rejected because there are going to be people that just don't receive you or don't receive the word. But your your mission is to go and tell them what God said you go preach the good news right so y'all I feel like I'm I feel like I'm rambling but man it's so good and even as I talk it out even more it's like wow like God is so good to us and I just can do nothing but thank him for his mercy his grace think about the grace we think about grace periods when you know we have to pay something and they give us 30 days right because I'm I'm in the credit industry, I'm going to reference this, but you know, you get a late payment on certain things, your credit card or things like that. They'll give you maybe 15 days, 30 days as a grace period before they say, okay, now this is going to report on your credit and it's going to affect you. I'm giving you 30 days to get this right. This is the grace that God gives us. He's just like, I'm going to give you some more time to get it right. But now, now your process is going to be even longer, but I'm going to give you that time. I'm going to give you that time to go get it right, to come back, bring it all back in and try it again. And that was the problem with the children of Israel. God wanted them to purge themselves of this slave mentality. He wanted them, them to become like, the people who are living in covenant with him to live in blessings like the promised land of milk and honey he's like y'all are going to thrive over here y'all going to go defeat these giants y'all are going to possess the land y'all going to subdue it y'all going to take over it i don't need y'all to be looking at these people that y'all are going to fight as if you are already defeated because i've gone before y'all this is my covenant with you. I just need y'all to become who I need y'all to become. So when y'all get over here, you're not messing it up. And this is why a lot of them had to die in the wilderness. God was like, mm -mm, y'all are not about to go over here and contaminate this. You're not going to go mess this up because you didn't want to become who I was telling you to become. You didn't want to do the things that was required. You didn't want to let go of this mentality. You didn't want to... 
You didn't want to purge yourself. So now you can't go. You cannot go. And he had to make all of them die out, even Moses. So just think about all that hard work Moses put in. But Moses act like he was very uncertain. Like you literally go before God. Like you go up the mountain and you talk to God. You come back down. Your face has nothing but glory on it. Because of you are in the presence of God. And you still act like you're uncertain. Like God, why are you? Because these people want to beat me down. And you telling me to do this and do that. I can't talk to them. I need you to do this. I need you to like... That's all he kept doing. He was very uncertain and he was acting like he was boxing the air like the scripture said. And so he couldn't go experience the promised land. And that's what's going to happen with us if we don't set aside these things, these weights that so easily beset us and that is causing us these little foxes, these little foxes where their tails are lit on fire and they just coming through and setting everything on fire. My children screaming like that. Lord, they kind of caught me off guard. But I'm going to end it here. I think that was my cue. So I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, just the whole thing. Read it in all the different versions that you need to read it in and study it for yourself to understand that God is calling us to become. He's calling us to become. Being and coming requires movement. It requires you to move. You have to trust God. No matter how hard it is, you have to discipline yourself. You have to subdue your body to become this person that God wants you to be. And you have to stay before him and seek his face in it all to become this person. All of these people that you watch and you aspire to be, the ones that encourage you, these people on YouTube, Instagram, whoever you follow that is just, and you may have this like subtle thought in your mind as like, man, I want to do what they're doing. I want to experience those things. Who are you required to become to experience those things? Who are you required to become to boldly speak for Jesus. Who are you required to become to have that number one podcast? Who are you required to become to write that best-selling book? Who are you required to become to see a million dollars profit in your bank account? Who are you required to become to be the number one sales person in your company? Who are you required to become to leave a legacy and inheritance for your children? Who are you required to become to buy this thing for your children? Who are you required to become to pay your child's tuition in full with cash that you made? Who are you required to become to have that 700, 800 credit score? Who are you required to become to buy that dream car? Who are you required to become to even encourage your children to get through the things that you are going through currently? Who are you required to become to repair the breach and break the curses and break the chains and end the bondage and overcome the addiction in the strongholds? Who are you required to become to be a part of that community and this community? And who are you required to become to sit at these tables with people that you know you are supposed to be sitting with? Who are you required to become to change the face of an industry? Who are you required to become to step into a place where you know there's no Jesus leading it at all, but you are the one who are supposed to go into that and 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 and, and reveal Jesus in it and bring Jesus in it. There's so many questions that you can ask yourself. Even right now, there are some goals that you didn't accomplish. There are some things that you knew you were supposed to do years ago and you didn't do it. There were things that still sitting there that is waiting for you to become the person that you need to become. 
So that's it. That is all y'all. I thank y'all. Like that is just my testimony exuding through me because that's revelation right there for me. And I'm just like, Lord, you are amazing. I know you got me. I know you got my back. So as I step into this next season and become this person for you to get the glory, not for them or man or anybody else to get the glory, but you, I know you got me and I know you are carrying me. I won't lack anything. I move by faith and not by sight. I'm stepping into this boat and I mean, I'm stepping outside of this boat and I know that I will not drown. I know I will not go under the water. I know I will not begin to sink. You got me. You got me, God. And I just want to encourage you to remember that as you say yes and fully surrender to God every single day to become this person that he needs you to be, that he got you. With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. So if this blessed you, please comment below. Let me know what you think. What did you get out of this? Share one key. Share this with somebody. Like, just, if it blessed you like it blessed me, I feel like I rambled a little bit, but you know what? I had to get this message out. <laughs> this is my tea. This is my testimony. And I just love God so much because he has brought me through so much. And I don't want to continue to run. I'm just like, God, I'm, I discipline myself. I subdue my body. I go through the hardships because it's all about you at the end of the day. So thank you for watching. And like, comment, subscribe. And be blessed.